Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for coming back and tuning in and all that good stuff. I appreciate it. And today I'm going to jump into a Luminar photo. And here it is. Now, that's the final. I guess that's kind of obvious. Um, here's the original. Uh, now, this was shot in Prague when I was there last year. And I shot it with my wide-angle lens from the top of their uh, tower, bell tower thing that's in the middle of uh, their town square, which is kind of over here to the right of the photo. Uh, but this was a, I think it's called St. Nicholas Church. I can't remember the name exactly, but it's stunning. Uh, the inside is just crazy gorgeous. But I like the view. I love shooting cityscapes. I had some amazing clouds. And there's a lot of color, but as you can see in the raw file, well, okay, this was a JPEG I made the video out of, but regardless, I shot it in raw. Um, the uh, the raw file, just, you know, the colors really aren't there, so I turned it into that. Uh, and now in comparison, you might be like, you know, ow, my eyes kind of thing, but I'm going to walk through what I did, and you can also see I did a little um, uh, barrel distortion sort of uh, fix there. That's the wide angle with the distortion, and there it is without. So let me hop into this uh, unedited photo and we'll walk through it right now. Okay, so here we are. I've got the develop filter, which would be raw develop with the raw file, but I did a couple of little things here. I took the temperature to the left and the tint to the right. Uh, I do that on just about every photo. I've, I've talked about that many times. Let me show you the before. So that's unedited, untouched, and that's the after the develop filter. Because the develop filter uh, is basically your anchor filter, when it's on there, you, you can't turn it off. So I can't undo that without uh, having to recreate the steps. So anyway, um, a little bit left temperature, a little bit right tint. Um, I also went in here and you can see the lens distortion. I took it to 28. So that accounts for uh, there a little bit of barrel distortion, which personally, I didn't really notice a whole lot. But then I thought, I was like, well, I better just check that a little bit. And so when I moved the lens distortion uh, slider to sort of try to compensate for what I thought might be barrel distortion, I realized, yeah, it actually was a little bit distorted. So um, that's the lens correction tab. And then, of course, there's a transform tab if you want to do other things. If you're interested in a video about that, I've got one that I'll put a link up here. Um, but uh, it's very powerful stuff and great to have in Aurora. No, sorry, in Luminar. I've been doing so many Aurora videos. I think my last three were Aurora. So I'm doing a Luminar video, but sometimes I just get to talking and I say the wrong one. So this is Luminar. You can see the file here, LMNR. You can see Luminar. So I'm going to try to keep that straight. Um, okay. Uh, highlights I took down a little bit and I bumped up the shadows quite a bit so uh, and added some clarity as you can see. So if you look at it again one more time, it's fairly dark um, and even though it was a vibrant scene, it doesn't look very colorful. So we're kind of getting there. Uh, next was Accent AI, which I like because uh, it just works really well. It works kind of like Smart Tone, um, which is in the Tone Filter. I didn't use it here, but oh, I did actually down here. Um, but Accent AI, it just intelligently applies, um, you know, updates or enhances your photo. It's it's basically an automatic slider. So you just drag it to the right and it does stuff. So uh, there's the before and the after. As you can see, it just dark, or excuse me, brightened some of the darker bits. Um, next, I went for brilliance and warmth, and that's because uh, I wanted to start popping some of those colors. And you can see my final result is very colorful. And in fact, it might be too colorful. I'll probably take that down a little bit at the end. But um, there, as you can see, it's starting to get a little bit of that pop, which is one of the reasons I like this filter so much. It's got a vividness and a warmth slider. And so one more time, there's the before and there's the after. It's warming up the building and the sky and everything. So it's, it's kind of looking nice, I think. Uh, next up was tone. So here I added a little contrast and a little smart tone, uh, smart tone to the right. So that will increase the uh, brightness of the dark areas without affecting the stuff that's already bright. Uh, if you're going to the right to brighten the image. If you're going to the left to darken it, it'll darken the stuff that's bright without darkening that which is already dark. So it is intelligent. Um, and I added contrast, which I did not do up here in the develop filter. And if you want to know why, there's not a reason. Um, I just didn't do it up there. And I, I use tone on just about every photo, even though I may use raw develop or develop. Um, I just like tone a lot. It's got smart tone in it. I just like the controls. Uh, so it's just a personal preference. I don't actually know if the result would be any different in terms of contrast, but um, I just do it in tone because I don't know, tone is kind of my go-to. So um, anyway, so it was late afternoon. It was kind of getting to be golden hour, sun setting. I was up above the city ready to just fire away, which I was doing. Um, I was elbowing between people. And uh, so I added golden hour because I wanted to bring that vibrance to life. And, you know, bam, boy, does that make a difference. Um, that's one of the things you, you like, you don't get golden hour in Aurora. And I've been in Aurora for, the, I think, the last three videos. 
And I gotta admit, I miss Golden Hour. It's just freaking cool. So there we go. It really does bring that vibrant Golden Hour look to a photo. And I love that time of day. Golden Hour and Blue Hour are just like, you know, top of my list. Okay, so that's, uh, that's where we're getting. So let me see. Uh, so far, there to there. I think we're getting there. Um, next up is color balance. I talk about it all the time. I'm not going to bore you by telling you it's one of my favorites, but uh, it's one of my favorites. Um, so what do you do here? Uh, shadows, I didn't do anything. In midtones, um, I went a little bit to the red uh, and a little bit to the magenta and a little bit to the blue. So um, in fact, so wait, no, I went a little bit to the yellow, actually. In fact, I might take this back and go a little bit more blue. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to see how the photo looks at the end. Um, and that's one thing I do a lot is I'll make the edits and I'll get my colorful version because I, I like to have colors popping, but I think it's a bad idea if like every color is popping because then it's that clown vomit that I've talked about before. You know, you don't want to oversaturate everything. I think one color or two primary colors that are like on opposite ends of the color spectrum, that works really well. Uh, but if everything is vibrant and alive and super colorful and saturated, it becomes overwhelming and frankly kind of unreal. I think at this point I'm a little bit unreal, so I think I need to tone it down. Um, and then in the highlights, I did a little bit here. Um, I might actually come back a little bit more blue in the highlights and a little bit more blue in the highlights. Again, um, with color balance, I'll, I'll make adjustments that I like, and then there's usually other filters that come along. And then I end up going back to color balance or saturation and vibrance or something like that to adjust them more because um, after you make other adjustments, it always seems to throw color off. So like contrast makes the colors look different, for example. Um, so um, next up was saturation and vibrance. And I actually took the saturation and vibrance. Oh, oh just the saturation, not the vibrance. Um, I love vibrance personally. Um, I usually go to the right with it because it'll basically give some pop to the sort of non-saturated color. So the stuff that's not as dominant in the photo will sort of get some pop with the vibrance. So you can see that like the rooftops of the, uh, uh, the church there in the sky when I'm going like this are really starting to pop. Um, but I think I'm, I'm gonna put that on like negative, you know, let's say negative eight and I took saturation down. Um, actually, I'm gonna go back to zero for now. Let me see. Um, HSL was next, and this was purely just for the greens. And so if you look at it, I just took the saturation and the luminance of the green down. So if you look at the green trees here on this street and the ones in the foreground, let me show you the before. They were kind of getting that neon-y kind of yellow green. Um, kind of that, um, that's the kind of green that I see a lot in HDR, like grass and bushes and trees that are shot in, in daylight. Uh, or in good light, um, they'll often look kind of neon yellow green uh, in HDR, and that's kind of what it's looking like. So I just toned that down. I wanted to reduce the saturation and then darken them a little bit because I also, like when it's that bright, it's kind of overwhelming, and I feel like my eye is drawn to those trees. And admittedly, I don't really care about looking at the trees. They're just kind of in the way. Um, I want to look at the church. And so by darkening that, I feel like I've created a little bit of contrast between that and then the church and the street that are right behind it. And so hopefully it keeps you from having your eye go right to those trees. Let me show you one more time. You know, it, to me, it helps a little bit. I don't know. This is not science. Uh, this is being art. You know, you just kind of jack around with stuff until you get what you like and then you like it. So you're done. Um, that's kind of how I work. At least that's there's <laughs> there's a philosophy lesson for you. Um, Structure is my last thing, and this was purely just in the sky. And all I did, if you zoom in, um, let me show you. Uh, let me turn this off. And if you look at the sky, it's just a little bit of grainy kind of stuff. Um, and structure is really good at removing that, well, negative structure. And I've talked about this plenty of times. I'm sure you've seen it in my other videos. So as you can see, the sky is vastly different. There's the before, and there's the after. Much smoother, which is, um, I'm gonna go back to fit to screen for me. Smooth skies are just the the thing. Um, I just like that. Uh, I don't know why, I just like it. Um, I think probably because I did HDR for years and back when I was uh, new at things, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and I often had grainy skies because I was cranking HDR detail and I didn't have the programs or the knowledge to make those adjustments. And now that I do have both, um, I like to make those adjustments. I just like smooth, dreamy skies. I also like smooth, dreamy water. It's just something I like. Um, what I did here is um, I applied this with a gradient mask. So I made the adjustment and then I dropped a gradient mask into the sky. So let me show you the mask. Uh, oops, let me click on brush so I can show you. 
And you can see it's a straight line across. I just dropped a gradient and then I went back with the eraser and I erased it around these uh, spires at the top of the church. And so if you weren't aware when you uh, apply a filter mask, you can apply it with any of these, a brush, a radial gradient, or luminosity. So I chose gradient because it's basically pretty close to a straight line just coming down and it makes it quick and easy. So um, now that I've made those other color balance adjustments as I was talking earlier, I actually like the color. I don't think it's oversaturated. I think it was kind of before. Let me show you the before. And again, a little bit of barrel distortion. It's kind of bulbing out because of the wide angle lens. And after, I think that looks a lot better. Um, and the sliding before and after, you can kind of see the impact it has on the building. Uh, but in general, obviously, we did a lot to color and we did a lot to the light here. I didn't really bring up details much. You could, if you wanted to, you could just go add a filter and you can get structure again, for example. Um, and I'm gonna close the filter catalog, but this time if you wanna drag this structure to the right to give it a little bit of crunch. Um, I don't know why I clenched my fist. It's just like, ah, give it some crunch. Uh, and then you get your brush and I'm gonna right bracket key to make it bigger. And I'm just gonna brush that in a little bit uh, in some of these buildings here. So the church for sure, maybe this building and this little section of building, maybe a little bit of that street. Um, and that, that's something else with, uh, let me show you my mask uh, because this will illustrate my point. Um, a, you don't have to be precise and B, I don't think you have to cover everything with your edits. Um, and so like when I brush in detail, I don't brush it into every single bit. Like the buildings over here, that's fine, however they look. I don't really care. I don't really want people looking at them. Um, it's the stuff in here that I think is important. Um, and so these are kind of the areas that I'm sort of brushing, you know, and you can clean it up a little bit. But honestly, um, a lot of the times when I'm brushing in stuff in these videos, I'll just say, you know, I'm just doing a quick job, kind of sloppy. But the truth is, I'm kind of sloppy all the time. Uh, not my living quarters. I'm pretty organized and kind of uh, OCD in that regard. But when it comes to masking, I'm not a perfectionist. I'm not trying to get it exact. I'm not saying, oh my gosh, a little bit went over the edge on that tree. I better erase it. I don't really care. And the truth is, you can't tell. Um, and so I don't waste my time. And now, there are situations where you need to do a really detailed mask and stuff, and I get that. And I'm not saying, don't ever do it, and who cares? I'm just saying, in situations like this, there's so much going on, no one's gonna notice, really. Um, I added a little structure because maybe it looks appealing to my eye, but the average viewer that's gonna be looking at this on a small handheld device or on a laptop, um, you know, via social media, they ain't gonna know. Um, if you print it large, you know you might be able to uh, uh, to, to notice, uh, but again, really, I, I don't know. I, I don't print a lot, uh, but I kind of don't think that, um, unless the contract, the difference, I should say, not contrast, unless the difference is vast, um, then you're probably not gonna notice, but there's a before and after. If I just turn off structure, I mean, I can see a little bit in the building, especially in the church facade, that's a little bit crisper, which I think looks good, but um, you may not be able to tell in the video. And if I shared this on social media, one version or the other, they're gonna look the same. So uh, let's face it, 99% of our photos are consumed via small devices or laptops and on social media. Uh, they're not often hanging on walls anyway. Uh, and definitely there are pixel peepers out there, but who cares? Um, I'm not one. So that's that, a little talk, a little uh, photo work. And we went from, you know, kind of dark. Um, it was a great time of day with some nice light and it, this is Prague. It's just a freaking colorful, beautiful city. It's stunning. It's like Paris beautiful. Like Paris, maybe the most beautiful city. I don't know. I haven't been to all the big ones, but I've been to a lot. Um, Paris is definitely probably number one. Prague is probably also number one or number two. Like it's that gorgeous. So if you haven't been to Prague, get over there if you can. You'll love it. Um, and that's that. Very saturated. Again, you can come in here and say, hey, Jim, a little too much. Okay, I'll just take the saturation down and you get that whatever. Uh, do whatever you like. It's your photo. Have fun with it. That's how I would handle this one in Luminar, and I'll be back super soon with more stuff. I actually got a couple more HDRs that I built and saved, and I'm probably going to make videos out of at least one of those, maybe both, and then I got some more Luminar stuff coming too, along with uh, some other news. So that's it for today, my friends. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe, hit like, hit share, tell your friends, tell your mom, do whatever. Just have a good day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care, and adios.